In November 1972, Atari released one of the first arcade video games. This game was of two 2D rectangles hitting a dot to each other, named Pong. 72 years later, video games today in 2019 have evolved to photorealistic 3D graphics and simulations, reaching to the point of viewing sections of real life directly from our eyes. So with this in mind, it's no reason why we should not expect it to get better in the following years. And with that comes the questions. Has it already? Is this non-fiction? Are we a simulation ourselves? Now, first off, what is the simulation theory? The simulation theory provides that all reality, including Earth and the universe, is in fact an artificial simulation, most likely a computer simulation. It's an insane idea, yet really fun to think about. The thought that we could be our own video game. The theory has a strange place in our world and in our media technology, such as gaming. In fact, the theory has gained traction due to evolution in gaming. This was even quoted by technology entrepreneur and CEO of SpaceZ and Tesla, Elon Musk, when asked, answered. The strongest argument for, the, for us being in a simulation, probably being in a simulation, I think is the following. Um, that, that 40, called 40, 40 years ago, we had Pong, like two rectangles and a dot. That right. was what games were. Um, now, 40 years later, we have photorealistic 3D simulations with millions of people playing simultaneously, and it's getting better every year. Mm -hmm. And soon we'll have virtu you know, vir virtual reality, we'll have augmented reality. Um, if you assume any rate of improvement at all, um, then the games will become indistinguishable from reality. The question has been asked and explored many times and has been debated since before technology. Example being philosopher Shuang Xiao, he wrote about a man who dreamed of being a butterfly. When the man woke up, he couldn't figure out if he was himself or if he was the butterfly dreaming of being himself. Once, Zhuang Xiao dreamed he was a butterfly. He didn't know he was Zhuang Zhou. Suddenly he woke up and there he was, solid and unmistakable Zhuang Zhou. But he didn't know if he was Zhuang Zhou who had dreamt he was a butterfly or a butterfly dreaming that he was Zhuang Zhou. Between Zhuang Zhou and the butterfly, there must be some distinction. In today's media and years before, the concept and idea of simulated realities have been tossed around from books, TV, movies, and in other medias. You take the blue pill, the story ends, you wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Centuries-old philosophers have also debated this. René Degas debated that existence is real because we individually think, creating the phrase, I think, therefore I am. Degas concluded that, if one is skeptical of existence, that is in and of itself proof that he does exist. Yet, video games today have developed something called NPCs, or non-playable characters, who are there to fill empty space in the environment or to give out tasks for the playable character. NPCs are given scripts that direct them to their daily tasks. Walk around, speak recorded dialogue, act out their job. The developers of my favourite game series, Elder Scrolls, created something called Radiant AI, which allows the NPCs to dynamically react and interact with the world around them. Given a basic goal, such as eat in town at 2pm, the individual scripts added to each character will determine how the NPC will achieve the goal. A character with high morale will go out and buy food if they are hungry and have no food on them. A character with low morale will steal food under the same conditions. The NPCs think how they want to interact with their world. In BBC's podcast The Infinite Monkey Cage, hosted by professors Brian Cox and Robin Ince, Cox and Ince, as well as guest philosophers Nick Bonstrom and neuroscientist NL Seth, responded to Elon. No, there's a one in billions chance that this is based reality explaining the requirements to simulate our world, such as being able to simulate consciousness, and also the possible reasons as to why we would be simulated, such as viewing changes in history and their outcomes. I'm not comfortable with that assumption at all. I think it's quite a dangerous assumption uh, for a few reasons. Firstly, that it's just not obvious that consciousness is the kind of thing that can be simulated if we simulate uh, a hurricane or a big storm inside a, a computer inside the Met Office, it does not get wet or windy inside the computer at all. It's not, it's simulation doesn't have that kind of property. So why should a simulation of consciousness 
actually give rise to conscious experience. There's this distinction between simulation and instantiation, which I think we, we need to pay attention to. Dige I think maybe consciousness is more like digestion. Yeah, you, you, you can simulate digestion, but if you put food into a computer, it's not going to work very well, let alone sort of you know, enjoy its meal and go and... I, and I can fully back that up. <laughs> <laughs> the question of, are we simulation, is a fun and existential thing to think and toss around, which it has been a lot. And I think it's because it's something we can't prove and disprove. It's an idea of the future to look forward to, which we are slowly creeping closer to as we further video games.